and uh, one of the new exhibitors that's going to be here this weekend, and we want you to come by, is Mr. Michael Cook, who is a silk rancher, okay? <laughs> he raises silk worms. Look, look, I'm going to show you. Look, this is his ranch right here. These are silk worms from China about, what, three, 4,000 years ago. The Almost Chinese five. figured out how to make these little worms go to work. Almost 5,000 years. Quite amazing. All right. This little worm will make a cocoon that looks like this. And it gets inside. And if it stays in there for a long time, it'll convert into a moth. But what we do, or what Michael does, tell us the process. You actually boil the cocoons to get the thread out, right? I take the cocoons and I put them in hot water, and that loosens up the thread on each cocoon. Each cocoon can have to, up to 1,500 meters of thread. Each cocoon? Each cocoon. Unbelievable. And you can see them unwinding in here. See yeah. the thread coming off of there? Yeah. And, and so I'm, you're making a bigger thread. A spool. I'm putting about 15 or 20 of them together to make a bigger thread, and I'm winding that onto a spool. And from there, we start with the silk thread. Yes, that makes a silk thread, and then I twist it and dye it and weave it into ribbons. Unbelievable. Now, this is your first year here. Welcome aboard. We're glad you. you're here. Because when did you get involved in silk ranching? <laughs> I've been worm raising ranching. silkworms since 2001. Uh -huh. I've been weaving since 1988. Uh -huh. And uh, the silk was just kind of an extension of my weaving to start with. And I've gotten more and more into the silk and the moths. All right. And uh, Well, can you follow us over here? Because we were going to follow the process so people can see. And you can come visit with Michael, and he'll tell you all about it, because uh, here is... Uh, Those are native Texas silkworms. You, that's you see that little moth green thing up there? That, that's a silkworm from Texas, right? That's a native Texas silkworm. Okay. And you polyphemus. Can, and, and if it stays in its cocoon long enough, it comes out to a big, beautiful moth, which is very interesting, because the silkworms, which create the beautiful silk, are not necessarily pretty. As a matter of fact, Michael's going to go bring the comparison over here because this would be a Texas moth. It's a lovely. This the is China the moth. silk moth, which actually makes the beautiful silk, but isn't that pretty. Why is that? It's because they've been bred for silk. Oh. They've been bred for 5,000 years to make more silk and to make quieter and prettier silk. And, uh, well, they and, just and don't focus on the moth. And these are the products that you make. Remember, we started with the little worm. We went to the thread. Then you dyed and colored, and you did the actual weaving here. Mm -hmm. Now, do you are you selling this, or are you no, more demonstrating? I'm just demonstrating. Okay, so you're basically preserving the the the, the craft, technique. the technique. Exactly. And come on over here because we want you to see uh, what our little friends, the moths, can become. This just beautiful. That's an atlas moth from Taiwan. Awesome. And of course, if, if they grow in the wild, this is what they look like. But since some of these have been raised for thousands of years to produce silk they they give us the product and look at this now ladies you say silk purse you say silk <laughs> scarf just remember it came from a worm and that is silk from Uzbekistan that's a technique called ikat so you you've learned all this I've learned quite a bit about silk studying it and there's a lot of neat information a lot of old history it amazes me how you can weave this and get the colors in there like that. That's actually all done in the dyeing. It's all done in the dyeing of the thread, and then they weave it, and the pattern comes out as they weave it. Terrific. Well, Michael Cook will be here on display this coming weekend. The uh, Folk Life Festival now celebrating its 30-some 30, 30 years that we've been doing this. 35 years. It's our anniversary. We want you to know that it opens tonight and that you can come down and celebrate all of our cultures that brought uh, Texas and made it what it is. And, and the tickets are available at HEB, and you can certainly come down. They've, got, they, they've worked this out with the parking and all that for so many years that they're pretty good. So we want you to come down. If you've never been here or if you have been here, come down and enjoy. We're going to give a giveaway. Which caller is it? The fourth and fifth caller that calls us. It's a, a four-pack for a family. Give us a call, and we'll get you some tickets. There's a number on the screen. Uh, give us a call, and we'll get you some tickets to come out and enjoy. And you can learn a little about everything, really. I mean, uh, we've got everything. We've got the food from all over the from all the cultures. We've got the drinks, and we got all that stuff. And we're keeping many of our heritage alive. Now he's not Chinese, right? No. Nope. But you celebrate their Chinese invention. I study Asian history quite a bit with learning about the silkworm. So we learn about each other all over the world and how. We have used our native products to make beautiful things. Okay, Leslie? Next time you ask your husband for uh, a, a 
silk scarf, remember your little friend who made it for you. Oh, he sacrificed so we can look pretty. Oh. <laughs> and <laughs> that's a silkworm. We'll talk back to you. Okay. Oh, bye, Mac. Oh, I'd rather see your face than that thing. Oh, wouldn't you rather see these cute little faces?